In Santa Fe, William Schuster may be best known as a painter, but there is much more to his story, including his life in the army during World War I. Schuster was born and grew up in Philadelphia. He entered military service in May of 1917 and was assigned to 1st Company, 4th Provisional Training Regiment, Reserve Officers Training Corps as a cadet. He was commissioned 2nd Lieutenant Infantry National Army on August 15, 1917. He was sent to Camp Meade, Maryland and assigned to Company A, 314th Infantry Regiment. He was commissioned 1st Lieutenant May 12, 1918 and transferred to Company L within the same regiment. It was after what was probably too brief of a training that he left with his unit from Hoboken, New Jersey to Brest, France that July on the SS Leviathan. From there, he went on to Nelamassu and then to Gilly. While in Gilly, he was ordered on special duty to the division headquarters to serve as assistant to the G3, which managed operations. He proceeded to Protoy, France, and reported for duty to Colonel George A. Wildrick, G3, for the 79th Division in August of 1918. The division moved from location to location during the war until ending up in choy en argonne It was here that in the early morning of September 26, 1918, the troops of Schuster's division went what is called over the top, meaning they exited the foxhole and launched an attack. This was the beginning of the Maisongon Offense, a major part of the Allies' final offensive of the war. This was one of a series of attacks called the Hundred Days Offensive. Not only was this the deadliest action for the division during the war, it is the deadliest battle for the United States Army. From Schuster's division alone, 22 officers were killed. 77 wounded, and nine were gassed. 278 men were killed, 2,150 wounded, 138 were gassed, and 749 were missing in action. Schuster was one of the soldiers gassed that day. Later, the Philadelphia War History Committee would write, the 79th Division came under fire for the first time since its organization. More than half of its strength was made up of draftees of not more than four months service and considerable loss of actual training due to time lost in transport from the United States and in moving about while in France. So far as courage and self-sacrifice are concerned, the conduct of both officers and men was above all reproach. But, as in the case with all green troops, there was lacking the experience, which comes only from actual contact with the enemy. In view of the difficulties of the terrain and the inexperience of the troops, I believe both officers and men fought well. During the Hundred Days Offensive, the division moved to Timombois, then to troyon sommes There they occupied the Troyon sector, relieving the 26th Division until late October. They then moved to the Domvilliers to relieve the 29th Division and part of the 26th. This is where Schuster was when hostilities ceased at 11, 11 a.m., November 11th, 1918. The division remained in this position until December 26th. Schuster was then placed on special duty to bring back 51 general population prisoners to the United States. His trip back on the USS Princess Motoika was uneventful, and he ended up back in Hoboken, where he was discharged. Officially, Schuster was not wounded but having been gassed had lasting effects. This led him to being diagnosed with what was called a chronic disease of the lungs. 
This damage eventually led to tuberculosis. The thousands of veterans who received the same diagnosis were commonly referred to as lungers. His fight for disability was disapproved repeatedly until it was finally approved in 1935. After returning home to Philadelphia, he married Helen Ernestine Hassenfuss and studied art with J. William Server. But his tuberculosis was still an issue. His doctor told him that he had a year to live unless he moved to the dry, high desert climate of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Schuster, who only had minor experience with painting before reaching Santa Fe, soon met the Ashcan painter John Sloan, who annually spent time in Santa Fe for most of his professional life. Sloan served as an artistic mentor, if not an actual teacher for Schuster, for the rest of their lives. Will and Helen welcomed their son, Don Byron, in July of 1921, but later divorced in 1935. In 1937, Schuster married his second wife, Selma, otherwise known as Sammy. They had a son, John Adam. It was in Santa Fe Schuster met four painters with whom his name would become linked. In 1921, Schuster, along with Willard Nash, W. E. Mrook, Joseph Bacos, and Fremont Ellis, formed the original Santa Fe Art Colony. With a nod in the direction of New York's The Eight, and decidedly away from Taos's more famous association of artists, the group called themselves The Five, or Los Cinco Pintores, in deference to Santa Fe's Spanish heritage. The group would come to represent the best in Northern New Mexico, non-academic primitive tradition. Though Schuster is widely regarded today as a major regionalist painter, he is known equally for other talents and habits of personality. Schuster was a free spirit. He supported his love of painting with metalwork, plastering, and ceramics. He is remembered still in Santa Fe as an accordionist, a newspaper writer, and a vaudevillian. Probably above all, and despite his artistic recreations of Indian ceremonies and rituals, Schuster is also well known for his creation of Old Man Gloom and Zozobra. During the July 1952 rodeo in Santa Fe, Schuster's El Toro Diablo made its debut to much acclaim. With animated bucking, fire breathing, and fireworks, it became a symbol of the rodeo. Alas, the war in France never left him. He suffered from acute emphysema for many years, and the freezing weather exacerbated his condition. He was admitted to the Veterans Hospital in Albuquerque on February 3, 1969, for some tests and treatment. He hoped to return home in a few weeks, but that didn't happen. He passed away there on Sunday, February 9th. He was survived by his wife, Sammy, and his two sons, Donald Byron and John Adam. He was buried with military honors in the Santa Fe National Cemetery. William Schuster may have passed away, but he has left a lasting legacy on the Santa Fe community.